Imagine you are building your dream house. You want a spacious living room, a modular kitchen, three bedrooms and a backyard garden. But what if someone offers you a pre-built home without any customizations? You feel stuck, right? That's the same challenge developers face when creating objects in software that requires different configuration. Enter the builder design pattern, which simplifies the process of creating complex, customizable objects step by step. In this video, we will learn how to use builder pattern, walk through an example in Python and explore its real world application. So let's start with a basic scenario where we want to create a customizable house with predefined attributes like rooms, bathrooms and features. Here's a basic implementation without using the builder pattern. So this is how our house class looks like. This is no, this is our constructor which accepts different arguments like number of bedrooms, bathroom, and if house has the kitchen, garden area, and a garage. We have a string method that just split out the features of the house, like the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and like the other details. And this is how we create our new house. So in the constructor itself, we pass in the different parameters here. We have three bedrooms, two bathrooms. We have the kitchen area, we have the garden area, but we do not have the garage since the last argument is false. And that's it. So this simple implementation works for basic homes. But as customer demands more options like swimming pool, gym, or extra floors, managing this configuration in a constructor becomes a nightmare. Let's see why. Imagine we now need to include configurations for solar panels, smart home features, or specific room sizes. Now, this is what our constructor might look like. We might need to add arguments for pool and solar panel, and maybe if we want to have a smart home or not. So let's change our constructor. So this constructor is bloated, hard to maintain and confusing to use, right? Worse, if you forget to set one parameter, the whole object could break. So now if you want to use the new constructor uh, for creating a new house, we need to add three more parameters like, do you want a pool? Let's say true. How about solar panels? Let's say false. And what about the smart foam? Uh, let's again say false. So you see, it's, it's not very readable. Clearly, we need a better way to create our dream home. And this is where the builder patterns comes in. The builder pattern lets us create complex objects step by step in a flexible and readable way. Let's refactor our home building example using this pattern. So let's just also add uh, the pool. solar panel and smart home awesome so let's try to run this code so here we see we get our home printed like this awesome so let's refactor our home building example using the builder pattern so let's keep our house class as it is here now we create the new class called house builder class okay and let's define this init method where we have some initial values for the bedrooms bathrooms same for the kitchen i mean let's let's initialize with some initial value so garden maybe falls garage again maybe falls everything else is initialized to false except for the kitchen because kitchen is like the basic necessity of the home so this is the house builder class and in the house builder class what we can have is we can have different methods so for example set bedrooms and here we can have the craft and we can say that self dot bedroom is equals to the count and simply return self. Similarly, we can have 
classes for set bathrooms and again we pass in the count and we set the number of bathrooms equals to the count and we return self then we can have another method for the garden add garden which will simply set the garden equals true and return the same object similarly we can have uh, a method for add pool that will also set the pool to true and return then we have uh, solar panels and smart on so let's do it quickly self dot solar panels is equals to true and return self similarly um the last one is we have add smart home so now we have the house builder class which has its own constructor and different methods to independently add each feature like how many bedrooms we want how many bathrooms we want if we want to have like the garden pool solar panels smart home you get it right now how do how do we use this builder class to actually build a home we can have like another method a build method which actually creates our house and returns the house object so it just returns house and just pass in argument to it so the first would be the bedrooms then the bathrooms then the kitchen then the garden then we have the garage then we have the pool then we have uh, the solar panels and last but not the least is we have the smart home so now we have the build method which actually returns our house so now let's see this in action so here we will create a custom house using a builder pattern so let's create our house builder which is nothing but calling the house builder class and then our custom house would be house builder then set bedrooms say we want four bedrooms then we want to have set bathrooms say we want three then how about a garage oh i think we miss the garage part let's define it here So let's add garage. Let's also add pool. Let's also add uh, solar panels. And we'll skip the smart home. And after this, all we need to do is call the build method. Right? So let's see if our custom house is created as we wanted. So let's run our code. awesome you see the custom house we have four bedrooms three bathrooms kitchen garden garage pool solar panels but no smart homes because we didn't include the smart homes using the builder pattern we have the process of creating custom homes clean and intuitive each method represent a single step in building process ensuring readability and flexibility right so let's discuss the pros and cons of the builder pattern Talking about the pros, the first one is the step-by-step -step construction. It's very easy to follow and highly customizable. The second is the improved readability. Each builder method is self-explanatory. And the third one is the separation of concerns. What I mean by that is that keep creation logic separate from the main logic. So talking about the cons, the first one is the boilerplate code is required. So we require additional classes and methods as shown in the example we have the house builder class in addition to our house class and second is the complexity so it may feel like an overkill for simpler objects uh, to build with the builder patterns so let's talk about the real life use cases where we can actually use the builder pattern while building a software uh, the first one could be the real estate platform like we saw in our 
uh, example for configuring custom homes or office spaces. The second one is the game development to construct game levels or characters step by step. The third one is the travel booking apps to create customizable travel packages like flights, hotels, and if you also want to add like other activities to the package. The last one is the report generation. What I mean by that is, for example, suppose you want to assemble reports with headers, tables, and charts dynamically so you can build the reports in stages and steps that's the builder design pattern a handy way to construct complex customizable objects in software so i hope you understand now where to use a builder pattern and how it works and i hope to see you use it in your projects until then happy coding and see you in the next video